we welcome you to Getting Ready with Jamie Carp Ministries. So the Lord has uh, had us uh, for quite some time on learning about our birthrights, learning about what we actually already own, and helping us to understand that when we got born again, we got, <laughs> you talk about a package, we got so much within that. We had with salvation and prosperity and healing and, and uh uh, protection and that so many things come within that whole place of when we got born again, and so a lot of times when we've used this example, you know, and I, this is me upside and down. They we have a car, right, and we have a book <laughs> that tells us. Think of it this way: we have a book that tells us. What everything in that car, in it and on it, will do. And what you shouldn't do, and what you should do. And when you should do it. Ask me how many times I've got in the car book and looked in the book. Okay, the answer is zero. Okay, why? Why haven't I done that? Well, I, I, the only reason I know is that this is what I would normally do. Is I'd, I'd say, Dwayne. You know how to do that <laughs> instead of me looking at a book myself. Ooh, yes, Lord, I heard that. There's a lot of people that go to church and they only want someone to tell them what they need to do without them doing anything about it, right? But the Bible says faith without works is dead. So if you were to ask me something about that car, I would only be able to tell you the things that I know. And that's not very much. I mean, I can operate it, right? Drive it, turn a few buttons on and know things. But that car has more benefits to it than I know about. I know Dwayne and I, when we uh, turned in, we had leased a uh, uh, a RAV before we have this car, and this is so funny. The day we go to turn it in, Dwayne discovers something on the car. He said, Oh my goodness, that was there the whole time, and we didn't even know it. And we laughed about that. But this is how it works, even in the kingdom. We possess things, we have an owner's manual that tells us how to do life, that tells us about our inheritance, that tells us about healing, that tells us so much. Yet if we never get in it and we never do what it says and we only are going off of what, only going off of what someone else is telling us, we'll only know so much, right? So that's why we're very um, adamant here at the ministry to make sure that you're getting fed all the time. Um, even sending out the we send out the, the word is sent out every day, every day. And that's 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 a beautiful thing that uh, there's a feeding going on. So that inheritance that we have, there's so much that's within it. So the Lord has had us week by week breaking things down, and and as the Lord gives us the um, the the wisdom on it, we are going forth in it and going deep. So. Why do we need to know? Well, it's actually biblical that we understand our inheritance. Ephesians 1, 18-23 says, By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light. How do, you, how do we get our hearts flooded with light? By the Word of God. By hearing the Word, getting it down in it, watering those seeds, and then doing them. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light, so that you can know... And understand some wonderful things. The hope to which he has called you and how rich you are. Hallelujah. How rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints. So we're 
That's why, of course, we are going over our inheritance. Amen. And so, his set apart ones. And so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable, it's unlimited, and surpassing greatness of his power that's in us and for us who believe. Everybody say, who believe? As demonstrated in the work of his mighty strength. So I'm going to take you back a few Sundays. Remember we were having prayer on a Sunday morning and the Lord for a few weeks was having us to... Um, to really target healing. Do you remember the scripture that said the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you and is quickening your mortal bodies? So the, the Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives inside of you if you're born again. And, and inside of you, He is quickening. He is healing. He is uh, renewing you on your insides. Amen. But it's for those who believe. You have to have that revelation. You have to remember, Oh, Holy Spirit, you are quickening that in my body. You are quickening this in my life. You are quickening and helping me with my mind. You are quickening, uh, Lord, in our finances. In Jesus' name, amen. So you can ask the Holy Spirit to uh, help and quicken in all areas of your life, here's the greatest thing is that the Word is saying in your mortal bodies, He is doing something. So this right here is saying so that we would know and understand about our inheritance and how big and limited, immeasurable, surpassing greatness is His power that's in us and for us who believe. As demonstrated in the working of His what a mighty strength that's working. Working, working, working for those who believe. Working, working. He sent us. Amen. And this is that power. Praise the Lord. We got a lot to learn about the power of God. We really do. We really do. But how exciting is that? What a subject to learn and grow up in and mature. I, I'm excited about that. So, we'll do that together. Ephesians 1, 18, 23, ex ex continuing. Which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him in his right own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named. In case we don't get that, let's really see it. There's no one above Him. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Not only in this age and, and in this world, but also in the age and the world which are to come. Thank you, Jesus, for doing all you've done. And... He has put all things under His feet and has appointed Him the universal and supreme head of the church. A headship exercised throughout the church, which is His body. The church is His body. He is the head. The fullness of Him who fills all in all, for in that body lives the full measure of Him who makes everything complete and who fills everything everywhere with Himself. Man, our Jesus is so um, big. He's such a big deal. I mean, that sounds like a very small thing to say. He's such a big deal. Praise the Lord. And we get to be a part of what He's doing. We get to be a part of His plan. And, and, he, and he loves it that we're a part of it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for making us a part of you. So, just want to real quick take us back to... Um, that word foot, Joshua 1, 3, 6, and 7 says, Wherever you set foot, you will be on land I have given you. Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I will give them. Of course, this is the God speaking to Joshua. And um, Pastor Dwayne was ministering on this, and um, this was a few years ago now. And... Yet I want to remind you of something. God is still wanting His church to use their feet and put it on the devil's head and crush his head. That's what we as the body have been told to do. Praise the King forevermore. And God is still giving His people land. God is still giving His people 
the land of their ancestors. Hallelujah. That wasn't just a one time. That was, of course, for the land and the nation of Israel to whom we support and stand with. Yet at the same time, He is still giving His tribes, His people, the lands to which that now it is our inheritance also. Isn't that great? So as He was ministering on that on the 17th of March, showing this picture, and the Lord said, it's a foot. (laughs) And it goes all the way back. Think about that. Think about how the foot through the garden all the way through the to where we are still putting our feet on the devil's head. Praise the Lord. And he gave us that land, this land, amen, and uh, gave us the rights to have it, and we're thankful for it. Then the 18th of June, he made it clear to us that the other property, and that is an, uh, uh, an L that is, somebody put, stamped something on the other property uh, in Leland, North Carolina. And so, just a wonderful mission and just to remind our hearts of what God's doing. So, also to remind us that that foot is 7272, and it means the foot and the anthropor, I'm this word stuff, anthropomorphic of God. It means a symbol of God, a symbol of God. These lands are a symbol of God. And the seraphim and the cherubim, and it means three times in the Hebrew. So these are very special places to God, and um, aren't you thankful He just uh, He trusts us, mm-hmm. and also that He is He is so in this with us because of the last days of the prophecy that started in the garden, and it will be completely wow, especially in the last days. A huge, huge action for the body of Christ to put their feet on the devil's head. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so, as he was, as that word has happened in the garden, also it will happen in the end times that we are in. Just like when Joshua was told, uh, "Where you set your foot, I'm giving you land as inheritance." He is still doing that in the body of Christ today. Amen. And we get to be a living testimony of that in the ministry. Isn't that wonderful? Praise the Lord! Amen. And so these are just symbols. That this is the Mobius wheel. Uh, this is what God's time looks like. Our time is 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, the day 12th, 13th. God's timing is completely circular. And you can see things, especially even now, we're moving into the times. I think last night was an ushering. There was a marker. It happened last night, and we can talk about that another time. Um, to which I believe that the temple, the third temple, is is right ahead of us. And just like in history that we've been reading about, Antiochus Epiphanes, when the, he went in and took the temple over and trashed it, uh, there will be another time. And Jesus says, when you see the sacrilegious one that does desolation to the temple, when you see them in the temple, right, in Matthew 24, so that's when the Antichrist will go into the temple in Israel. And so I, I, I believe very much so that things are starting to move. Um, there's just a lot of things going on, which we could maybe talk about that. We'll see what the Lord has on Sunday morning. But we got to get to it tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, when Adam and Eve were in the garden, we've been talking about the garden a lot here lately. And um, God, in Genesis 1, 28, He put the blessing of Him on Adam and his wife. It was primarily, it came on Adam first because he created him, right? And then she came later from him. And the this is the blessing. Not, you know, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to give you this and I'm going to be a blessing to you. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a force 
that God put in the earth, just like when He was creating everything, He also put in, in the earth the blessing. The blessing. And He chose to put it inside of a human being. Not on them, in them. Isn't that great? Now, now, how do we know that? Well, we'll go forward and we'll see this. The blessing was in Him. He was the container for the blessing. So whenever He was even speaking, Adam, speaking over the animals, and He was naming them, wasn't He? And so... The blessing, the anointing of God was operating through him when all that happened. And even we see that when Eve came from him, he spoke over her and called her, her name. And then later the prophecy comes from him that a man will leave his mother and father. There was no mothers and some fathers then. So you're seeing the blessing. You're seeing the anointing operating in prophecy from these very moments, even back then. So they were blessed. It came from him. She shared it because she came from him. So this blessing was inside and um, with them. And yet, because they committed high treason and decided to follow the word of the enemy instead of the word of God, when that happened, the curse came through one man. Why? Because the blessing was in him, through him. And when he sinned and come against God, the curse came through him and the blessing left him. Mm. And so everything got cursed, right? Everything, the whole earth got cursed. The animals got cursed. The ground got cursed. And it... and. It, the curse, the, the blessing was not out here. It was inside of them. So when they changed and followed the, the enemy, that's how the curse came in. The curse came in the earth through one man. That's what the Bible said. One man. And it had to come through him, not outside of him, not from the garden, through him. Got that? That was just brand new off the press for me a few days ago because the earth was not the earth was not administering the blessing. The earth was receiving the blessing from what was flowing from him. Mm. And so when they committed that high treason and wanted to be like God. Don't you think about that. I heard um, Brother Andrew Womack, which Dwayne and I are personally partners with him. Um, don't get to watch him as much as I used to, but I try to pick it up you know, uh, with, with the ministries that we partner with. And I heard him say this, and it stuck with me. And he said... Um, that Adam and Eve wanted to be like God, right? That they wanted to know more. They wanted to know good and evil because the enemy was telling them half truths. And the devil, that's what got him kicked out of heaven. He wanted to be like God. So when they took the bait of him, they then become the enemy's servant. And that's why, in case, you know, I, 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 and I didn't have these answers that I have now. I remember I worked with this lady at Mount Olive, and she was a good friend of mine. And, but she was, 
I would minister to her all the time. And she would just refuse to give her life to the Lord. And one day she was just kind of angry with me, kind of like that with me. And, um, and she said, why does God send people to hell if He loves them? And I, of course, told her, that's the person's choice. I knew, you know, part what to say. But this is the answer right here, is that Adam and Eve followed the devil instead of God. And so hell was never meant for mankind. It was meant for the devil and all his angels. So when mankind followed him, it made them follow... They were going to follow him right into hell. So our King Jesus made a way so that we wouldn't have to go to hell. He came to save our lives. And He has. But we have to accept. Praise the Lord. So, we talked about this uh, a while back to remind our heart, the Samika. And this is what they would do in the Old Testament when they had sin in their lives. They would bring an animal and they would bring it to the temple area on the outside where the burnt offering is. And that would be accepted. And the priest would then... They would transfer, they would put them together and, and the person would transfer, transfer. The, they'd put their, ha- their head on the bull or the animal's head. They would for sure put their hands on that animal's head and they would transfer, transfer their sin onto that animal. And then the animal was sacrificed and blood was shed on their behalf. So that's what happened in the Old Testament. So when Jesus, the last, the last, amen, lamb came to save our lives. This is what we know here. 1 Corinthians <coughs> excuse me, 11, 24 through 25. This is at Passover. And at the feast, he said, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way... Excuse me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance to me. So he wanted his body to be remembered. And by partaking, eating of him, drinking of him, remembering what he was about to do. Now we can re- remember what he did do. And he laid down his life. He used his body the entire time he was here. And he shed his blood. Now, when you look up that word remembrance, it literally means to remind myself. And it means to journey what to where I'm remembering leads me or extends me to. So when Jesus was saying that to them and us, he was telling us, Remind yourself of what I've done. Well, he's now done. He was going to do. Remind yourself. Remind yourself. Take yourself in your imagination there. And the first three letters of that word is Strong's number 303. And it means you can go up in remembering. You can go upwards, between, backwards, over and over and over again. Praise the Lord. So, The Lord really wants us to know that it is important that we remember what He has done for us. Therefore, it's very important, as we've just read in the Scripture, that we understand our inheritance because that's why He did all of that. So that we would have this great inheritance, including salvation, including that we didn't have to go to hell, and everything else that comes in this inheritance. But we have to remember that we have this because a great price was paid. Everything was paid for. Everything was paid for. We won't need anything else. Everything is paid for. Praise the Lord. So our job is to, of course, take communion, remind ourselves, eat and drink of Him, just like He said, and remember. 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 You know, if I don't think on these things, uh, if I will not do it a couple of days, I can start telling I'm starting to not think like I should. That's one of the things Dwayne and I really strive to do. There's times we do um, 
excuse ourselves. We try really hard to take communion every day because it takes, it makes us remember what we have and what He did. And so I encourage anybody to do that. Just, you know, just set yourself a decision. Um, I'm going to do it once a week. I'm doing it twice a week. I'm not talking about just in church. You can take communion at your house. You can take communion anywhere. Okay, so through one man came the curse. And through one man, the blessing, got. we got the blessing back. We got the blessing back. Hallelujah. So let's, let's look at this. Galatians 2.20 Because we have been crucified with Christ in Him, I have shared His crucifixion. It is no longer I who live, but Christ, the Messiah, lives in me. And the life I now live in the body, I live by faith. In adhered to, in reliance on, and putting my complete trust in the Son of God, who loved me. Just say, who loved me. That was His motivation. Amen. Obedience to Father. And because He loved Father and He loved us, amen, He gave Himself up for me. That's beautiful. So we have been crucified with Christ. So everything that Jesus went through, He by His faith, and when we receive Him as our Lord and Savior, that puts us inside of that whole transition by faith because it is by faith. You can't do this any other way but by faith. You have to believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, by your faith. Amen. Amen. And so when we do that and we give our life to the Lord and we make Him the Lord of our life and we say and, and ask Him to come into our life and we're born again, then we go inside of that crucifixion transition and we are transformed from the inside out. We get everything in the inheritance. We're crucified with Christ. Everything that He um, purchased we get, we get it for free. For free. Everything is free. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. If you don't know Jesus, just hear these things. Don't, don't think of like, well, I'm going to have to give up things. No. Just receive His love. Receive everything that He's given for you. It's a wonderful thing. You will be very surprised. That once your heart changes, anything that you're thinking you're going to have to give up, it won't even matter to you. Amen. It may take a little bit of time, but you will change from the inside out. Hallelujah. So because of what He he did for us and everything, I mean, we lost. uh, this, This is huge what mankind lost through Adam and Eve. But He got it all back for us. Amen. 